I was born in Seattle. My mother's from Cambodia and my father's from Laos. They came to the U.S. as refugees while they were young and they met here. But after having me and my older brother, my parents split when I was three years old and I was raised by my Cambodian grandmother for the majority of my childhood. So it was tough growing up because I never had a clear sense of my identity. And I hated my name. John Tere, John Talangsi. During my elementary school years, I began to question my name. I thought to myself, what did it mean? And I wondered why my parents gave it to me. My first and last name are both Lao, and my mother has a Cambodian last name, which is Song. I knew I got my last name from my father's side of the family, but I felt further alienated because my father had a different last name than my brother and me. His last name was Tan Pilong. So I didn't understand why we even had the last name, John Talangsi. And my name was so long, 24 characters altogether, two letters short of a full alphabet. I hated roll call on the first day of school. Once the teacher said my name out loud and mispronounced it, I would heat up in embarrassment. Chantata. 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 And I would have to repeat my name to other people, and I wasn't even sure how to pronounce it myself. So I would just tell my teachers and classmates to call me by my middle name, Lucky. And every time I would write my name on paper, my name would fill the whole top of the page, causing my hand to burn. These type of things made me hate my name even more. I wish I had an American name, a normal name. And having a loud name was difficult because I struggled with my bicultural identity. Whenever I made a new friend, I would tell them I was Cambodian. I never acknowledged my Lao side and felt that I was only Cambodian. I didn't tell them I was Lao because my dad was not part of my life. He left when I was young, and I felt embarrassed when people would ask about him and what he did. I didn't want to explain that I didn't know much about him or tell them when the last time I saw him. I was raised in a Cambodian household, and therefore I only embraced the Cambodian side of me. And this was reinforced by my upbringing. Whenever I misbehave, my grandmother would call me Kon Lil, which means Lao kid. This was an insult to my Lao half, blaming it for my bad behavior. When I started the ninth grade at Franklin High School, I joined the Southeast Asian Young Men's Group. By participating in the group, I became more aware of my bicultural identity. I learned that I am a child of refugee parents. And I learned about the history of Southeast Asia, the history of the Kingdom of Angkor, and the Kingdom of Lansang. I learned about the civil wars in Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. And about the hundreds of thousands of refugees who fled their homes to escape the aftermath of those wars. I learned about the struggles my parents faced in coming to America, and about the values that are important to my family. I also learned about my name. Our group leaders encouraged us to talk to our parents and find out our family's stories. I started by interviewing my mom. So mom, how did I get my name? Um, your dad named you. I just agreed to it. So how come I didn't get like the Cambodian name then? Because your dad wanted to name you, you know. He doesn't, we never thought about the Cambodian name. He chose the first name, I chose the middle name. Oh. We decided to have your middle name as Lucky because 
you almost not make it. You're supposed to born in um, 1996, mm -hmm. but you were three months premature. I was on bed rest while well, I was six months pregnant. I pray every day that you're gonna go through smoothly my birth because I I want to keep you even though everybody tell me like you're not I'm not gonna, you're not gonna make it but I keep pushing myself that I'm not gonna stress myself out. If I didn't have mom, grandma, and family support, I don't think I can make it to this day. As I have gotten older, I have reconnected with my father, who lives in the Tri Cities. So I went out to see him and asked him about my name. How come my last name is different than yours and my mom's? Oh, because your last name is, is like a, it's my real last name before, you know, like my family last name is Chantalangsi. The whole, everybody in family last name Chantalangsi. So before I came to the United States, I lived in Thailand camp for refugee to enter to the United States. I have to change the last name because your auntie, is, she is sponsored me to bring me to the United States because she came to the United States before me and she said last name to her husband, last name. That's why I have to say the last name to match with her last name and to prove that I brought her sister. And I thought one day I became to do a citizen. I tried to say the back, but straight now it's the hard because I have to say everything, so I just let it go. I also learned that in Lao families, it's tradition to name children in a matching pattern. My older brother's name is Chanta Kat, and my name is Chanta Date. People can tell, like, you know, all that close about between brother, Chanta Date, and Chanta Kat. So I just make very nice when you call your name, you know. I have two neighbors who grew up on the same block as me, and they are also Lao and Cambodian. And they also have Lao first names that match each other, Tipasan and Tipasat. So I appreciate my name and the Lao tradition behind it. And I learned that even though others cannot pronounce my name, this doesn't mean that I have to pronounce it incorrectly also. Ultimately, learning about this history changed how I feel about my name and my bicultural identity. This Lao culture, even they call it name. In Lao, they call it date, like a, yeah, like a magic. Like a, mm -hmm. So you said like my name is like power, like what do you mean? Yeah, and today guys, a lot of people have like a have, have like a magic power, you know. Just like you do anything, you do better than everybody. Like that, you know. See? I wish someday you could be strong person, special, you know, like have your own power, step up your own, do whatever you have to do the best, the better than other people, you know. That's why I make it up, and it's true though. You go to school, say you like the best school right now, you know. Mm -hmm. I am Cambodian, and I will continue to acknowledge my Cambodian roots. My family has been through a lot, and I have benefited from their strength, and I am fortunate to inherit this history. But I've also learned that it's important to not only acknowledge my Cambodian heritage, but that I should also honor my Lao heritage. My ancestors are from Cambodia, but I have grandparents and great-grandparents from Laos as well. They are a part of me, and I am a part of them. And I can honor them now by learning their story and history. So I cannot just ignore one half and embrace the other. In fact, my learning is really just beginning. I am taking Khmer classes at the University of Washington, and I have learned that the first part of my name, John, means moon in Khmer as well as Lao. So my name is more than just a collection of letters that form to make a sound. It represents my biculturalism in a real way. My name has roots in both Lao and Khmer, so it is my identity. It is who I am. <laughs>